Hello, beautiful creative people. Welcome to howtoartjournal.com. I'm your creative tour guide, Kyla Givhan, and a fellow art journal lover. Let's spend a few minutes chatting with some amazing art journalers as they talk about their creative journaling and share the power of the art journal. In this interview, I chat with Lizette Markham, owner of Simply Art. Lizette is a creative mentor, artist, and teacher. She inspires others to embrace a creative practice so they can better themselves and their communities. She's fascinated by mixed media and uses unusual materials and tools to create. Lizette values service, simplicity, gratitude, and individuality. You can learn more about Lizette at simplyartoc.com. Welcome, Lizette. It's so wonderful to have you as our very first interview for HowToArtJournal.com. I am delighted to share you with the world because your creativity inspires me all the time. So I am excited to have you come on and talk about your creative practice and what you do and show us some of your lovely art. How are you? I'm doing good. I didn't know I was the first one, so now I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't know I was the first one, but I'm so ecstatic that you asked me to yes. participate in this community, and I'm I'm happy to happy to be here with you. Yeah, awesome. Well, I want to start off. Um, I want my goal is to try to keep the um, interviews short for people, but also okay. like full of information during that quick short time. And when I say okay. short, you know, I'm not rushing you. I'm not. It's like yeah. 30 minutes. We don't want to be talking for. We could, I think, <laughs> talk for hours. <laughs> um, but we don't want to make people sit through that. We want to get to the okay. good stuff. So okay. I'm going to start by asking you to tell us a little bit about the work that you do and what, what you do as a creative. It doesn't even have to be about art journaling, but just in general, what is your work and what do you do? Sure. Well, I teach art, which I love doing, and then I'm an artist myself. My medium of choice is mixed media, mm -hmm. but anything creative is what I like to do. I kind of just go off of the whim of the day of what I feel like using and how I feel like expressing myself. Okay. And sometimes it's not even artistic. Sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's just listening to music or, mm -hmm. or whatever artistic expression I have for that day. But Whatever I'm doing, I always share it on my website, which um, is simplyartoc.com. And okay. in that world of Simply Art is, is where I express myself and, and teach others to adopt a creative practice of their own. Yeah, no, you have your, your website is amazing. Every time I go to it, I'm like, yes, exactly. This is perfect. <laughs> this is, I know exactly who I'm dealing with when I look at your website. I'm like, oh. ap, it's, it speaks volumes as to your creativity. So, awesome. Um, all right, so inspiring others, teaching art. Um, one of the things that really, uh, when I was thinking about putting together a group of people to contribute to this blog, you were like yeah. top of mind because I had just seen and worked through your workbook. So mm -hmm. I'd love for you to talk to folks about the workbook because I think it's such an inspirational way for folks to get started. And if you're someone like me who's been art journaling for years, it right. still has the ability to inspire you to think outside the box, to think differently, to do something like different than you might be doing in your normal practice. So I right. would love for you to talk a little bit about about the workbook and show it if you have, you know, if you can show it to us. Awesome, I can. That bad boy is actually right behind me. But <laughs> well, it. the it's called the Simply Inspired, a creative workbook, mm. and it was inspired itself by the YouTube videos that I make. Because what I do is is I make YouTube videos and I teach people how to do things but mm. what I was noticing from the comments I was getting back, I'll put it down for a second, but what I was noticing is that people were nervous to get started to even do the tutorials that I was offering. Yeah. So what I decided to do is I started to collect some of my favorite prompts mm. and what I decided is to take all of those favorite prompt prompts and put it into a workbook which mm. is how this was created. So. What it is, is I like to call it the sidekick yes. because it has all of these, it has all of these really easy, I, th I like to think of them as pure jumpstart ideas to just mm -hmm. kind of get you thinking the way you used to as a child when you would look up in the clouds and start to see imaginary shapes mm -hmm. uh, because so much of us as we become adults forget that creativity isn't just for children. In essence, it's problem solving and that we all need it in our life. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what inspired the workbook. And the way I melded the workbook is I also have a site that accompanies the workbook where I host all of the tutorials so that you can follow along mm -hmm. through the book. So for instance, the first page I think is what most people struggle with mm -hmm. and that's how to start when you're staring at that blank piece of paper or you're staring at that blank canvas or that white screen when you're about to write something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the most scary part. So Absolutely. this is me hanging out with you while you conquer the white page. Mm -hmm. And then if the workbook isn't enough for you, you could watch video tutorials. So yeah. that's that's where that's where this came from. And I do have this available on on my website and um, and I'm loving it. And I think everyone else that's participating with the workbook is loving it too. Yeah, no, I know I did. And I will make sure folks have all the links they need to get to that workbook and to find it. Now, is it a tangible workbook that we order and we get in our hands? I know I had the PDF version, so I don't know if that's how it is delivered. Uh, yes, so when someone when someone purchases the workbook, they, they actually get this in the mail, which is so fantastic. Oh, nice. And then an email with access to the website is then sent to them. Okay. So they have this to physically hold and work with, and then they also have me along with them on their journey yeah. on the videos that are located on the website. But they do get this in the mail. Yeah. Thank okay. you for asking. Yeah. I always get to say, you totally get this in the mail. <laughs> And it's totally more than a workbook because you actually get me along with you in the tutorials. Yeah, no, that just knowing that is awesome because, you know, I, like I said, I had the PDF version mm -hmm. and but I still was able even with, the, you know, I printed out my pages anyway, right. and I still was able to follow along, you know, with even with just having the um, pages, but having the tangible book in my yeah. hands. Oh, I can't even because you could take it with you. It doesn't yes. have to be. You know, yes. you don't have to be tied to your computer. So that's, right. that's really awesome. And well, there's, because what I like to do is get people, especially, I notice that a lot of us creatives, we tend to be behind the desk, right, in our day-to-day -day lives. Yes. So one of the reasons why I wanted it to be tangible is because I didn't want you always watching me on the computer. Right. I wanted you to take me with you. So you can grab this workbook and go outside and do mm -hmm. a lot of the prompts that mm -hmm. are in the book, which yeah. is nice because... I want you out moving around because that's very much a part of the creative process. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, I like that you said it's a sidekick. I like that sort of terminology because to think of it as, you know, sometimes I had a teacher once that used to use the word springboard a lot. Like mm -hmm. it's just a way to, to, to push you, propel you into something else. And you're, you, you, you're using sidekick and it's like yeah. that person that's just like your buddy is going to sit yes. next to you and keep you like encouraged. So I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. So we have the creative inspiration on your website. Then we have the workbook that you're working on. So I'm interested in knowing what your creative process is like. Like when you sit down to create intentionally, what does that look like? How does that work for you? Well, when you say intentionally, I think of two different things. I first think of intentional as in uh, what a client is paying for. Mm. Uh, traditionally, my background has been in graphic design. So there's been a lot of a lot of times where I have to sit down and intentionally activate that creative part of my mind in order to accomplish a project. Right. And the other side of intentional is when I sit down to say art journal and I'm intentionally trying to express myself because perhaps I had a really good day or a really bad day. Right. In either case, I have to say I'm very blessed that the creative process kind of starts naturally for me. Mm -hmm. uh, what really kick starts it for me is getting messy. So if I'm doing something artistic, just touching something, that tactile feeling of whatever I'm using in my hands mm -hmm. will start to get me thinking creatively. Yeah. If I'm on the computer, I find it a little more difficult. Okay. So if I have to say do a project for a client. So the way I get past that is I go traditional and I'll get my ideas out with pen and paper mm -hmm. before I'm touching the computer. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how my creative process starts. And then once I get messy, it just starts to flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Get messy in order to yeah. be, you know, to, to make art. That's that's like start messy. I feel like yes. I always um, end up messy. <laughs> right. But I haven't ever thought about starting messy. Like just maybe slap some paint on my hands, rub it together yep. and do something, right? Absolutely. Um, I have to try that. That's usually yeah. not my, my sort of process, but... I like it. I'll try that. Oh, it'll feel good. It's like yeah. it's like the emotional block. First yeah. of all, you're like you're starting, right? But yeah. just just knowing that it's okay when it starts off a mess and it can't get any worse, you just <laughs> keep going. 
you know what I mean? And, and it feels so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that too. Um, earlier you mentioned the just the, imag- the imagination of a kid. Um, yeah. I think we do as adults, we lose that. We we don't lose it, it's still in us, but we lose touch with it. Like right. we forget how to activate it and access it as yeah. easily as kids do. Like I have a nephew who used to, when he was little, he would be literally walking around the house doing things and, and I would just watch him. And he was like having a conversation with elves and you know <laughs> other beings and, and I, for a while, you know, should we be worried? And then I would think, you know what? That is his imagination, like in hyperdrive. He doesn't yeah. need the rest of us to like help him figure out how to have a good time in his day. He are he had he can access it on his own, and he would right. just be playing these games and sword fighting with the air. And you know, he was in his own place. And I'm like, if if we could bottle that up and sell it to people, <laughs> right. like that ability to just turn it on. That's a, it's a powerful thing. The imagination is super powerful. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think it's important for people to remember that you ha- you, ca- you keep it with you at all times. You just have to know how to tap into it. So Yeah, it really is there. Speaking of, of your nephew, I'm sure that my husband would think the same thing about me. <laughs> I'm constantly bouncing around and, and I'm, I'm very much dramatic every time I talk. And, and when I tell a story about my day, even if it's the most minute thing, like going to the post office, it's right. epic. It's just totally epic. So it's my goal to pull that out of people because yeah. there's a storyteller in all of us and absolutely. there's that little kid within all of us. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> Going to the post office is epic. I love it. Oh, yeah. I come um, home with a full-blown, like, second novel size story. <laughs> I love it. All right. So the, the whole point of howtoartjournal.com is to create a space that is just specific about art journaling and is a, a place for because art journaling has been such a tremendous part of my for lack of better words my growth as a human yeah. and my ability to show up in the world and not be angry every day and not be frustrated or overwhelmed or afraid um, and it, it has really opened up a world for me, both my creative side, but also my professional life, my um, romantic life. Like just, it, it really does allow me to process differently yeah. than just my diary. Cause I'm, I'm an avid diary keeper. Like I write in a, like, that's a big thing for me um, ever since I was a kid. And so when I found art journaling and I started coloring with crayons in there and then moved to, graduated to colored pencils, then I graduated to, you know, paint and, you know, just constantly adding things to my practice, it's powerful. And so this space is about that. It's about how to help other people see the power in art journaling, um, if that is a medium they're trying to explore. So with all of that said, I'm wondering what kind of advice you might give to someone who's brand new, has never done anything with art journaling ever. They've never even um, put, since they were little, or maybe, never put crayon to paper or paint to paper or paint to canvas or whatever, but they've never done any kind of art journaling. What kind of advice would you give someone like that? Uh, I think I have two words of advice. The first one goes back to that getting messy. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really nice to just scribble in your journal. That's it. Just start with the scribble. It doesn't have to be poetic, right? You don't have to have paragraphs worth of of something. Just start with whatever's comfortable. And for me, it's a scribble. The second thing is it doesn't have to be expensive. Right. One of one of the things I like to say, especially if there's anyone out there that has children, mm-hmm. the best way to break down that barrier for your first art journal is to grab whatever you have on hand. Oh, so wow. if that's yeah. your kids' crayons, or if and or if you see all these really cool things happening on tutorials and mm-hmm. you're wondering how they did that, um, mm-hmm. I know I saw a blog post on the website of yours where mm-hmm. you're telling people to go into their kitchen. I yes. love that. <laughs> it does not have to be expensive. So right. if you have children, use their art supplies. Yes. And if you don't have children and you have nothing in your home, then grab a lipstick and scribble something on yes. your piece of paper before you head to Michael's. Yes. What it really is, is it's just about taking your hand and getting it to do something on a piece of paper and it'll start your journey, I yeah. promise. Yes. <laughs> 
I yeah. love that you brought up the lipstick. I did this <laughs> whole, um, I was doing index card today, and one of the prompts was nail polish. Yeah. And originally, immediately my mind went to, oh, draw a bottle of nail polish. And then I was like, no, what if I painted this card using all the different, because I'm not really, I mean, I'm pretty plain Jane, um, but I do have, I do own nail polish from like the past. And I literally right. was like, is this even any good anymore? Like <laughs> shook it up and started painting with it and was transported, literally. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is what else I could do with nail polish since I don't really put it on my nails. Um, yeah. So now all my all my nail polish lives in my art room. <laughs> <laughs> that is especially if you're not going to put it on your nails. It's it's really funny that you brought up nail polish. Yeah. A story that um, my mother likes uh, to tell but doesn't like me to tell <laughs> is that there was there was a small part of my childhood where um, where art supplies wasn't the easiest to come by. Mm -hmm. It was. It wasn't the most affordable thing, right. but I've always created since I was a little girl. So what I used to do is I used to paint with my mother's nail polish. And then I would go around the house and I would pull off the baseboard, right? So, you know, the board between yeah. your car and the wall. I would pull off the baseboard and I would frame my artwork. <laughs> with that, the baseboard. That so, is hilarious. I love yeah, it. I've been, I've been frugal since a child. So yeah. I mean, I say just grab the crayons. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I love that because when you think about it from a kid's perspective, that little brush in the nail polish t tube or container oh, is, yeah, a, it was is a paintbrush, right? I oh, mean, yeah. it, exactly what that is. So I love it. That's awesome. All right. So you said you had one, the get messy. And then was what was the second piece of advice? Oh, so it was get messy. I apologize. And then it was, um, it doesn't have to be expensive. Use your kids' art supplies if, you, if, yes. you've, if you've got them. Okay. Yeah. You said that. All right. So let's, speaking of supplies, why don't yeah. we talk about your, why don't you tell us what your favorite supply, tool, material that you use in your art journal? Sure. Um, I actually have two of my favorite in front of me. So the awesome. first one are these, um, these gelatos, oh, right? Yes. Which is, yes. oh, I love them. It's just like a creamy pastel, yes. right? Yes. And the reason why I love them, other than the fact that it looks like a lipstick tube, <laughs> Um, I actually did a live painting over Labor Day weekend and mm -hmm. there was a kid that came up to me and he was like, are you painting with the lipstick? You know, and I was like, no. And then I let him use it and uh -huh. he scribbled on the canvas, which is fantastic, right? Yes, Interactive yes. painting. Yes. Um, the reason why I love this is because it's, it's pliable and I like to use my hands when I do artwork. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And then the second art supply that I love are watercolor crayons. Yes. And the reason why I love these bad boys is because... It feels in my hand like I'm a five-year-old girl again, and I have a crayon in my hand. Yes. And the magic of it is that when you're using it, right, in your art journal, mm -hmm. it looks just like a crayon would. It does, yeah. But then the magic happens when you activate it with water, and all of a sudden it's this grown-up material, right? And it's yeah. this beautiful watercolor. So yeah. those are two of my favorite art materials. Yeah. No, those are perfect. I love those. If I had to have a list of ten, <laughs> those two would definitely be on my ten. Um, I think when I bought... Uh, my first set of watercolor um, mm -hmm. crayons. I bought the little tin pack that it comes right. in, um, the, the Caran d'Ache, and I was like, wait, I think I need more than 10. So I went back to the art store and I saw, I think the next set is maybe 12. And then yeah. there's a 16, like that keeps going up. And then I saw that there was like a pack you could buy online for like, it was like 184 of them. I was like, whoa, what is this? Or maybe it was 96. It was some insane number. And right. I was like, that will be a gift to myself at some point someday because they're super expensive when you get to that number but mm -hmm. i was like yeah that will be a splurge moment like when i do yeah. something get a book published or i don't know whatever thing but something big that will be my gift um because yeah. you're right they give you both worlds it's like i'm a 14 year old girl again mm -hmm. and then i can put my water to it and now all of a sudden i'm in the watercolor mode, right? Oh, so, yeah. Then yeah. all of a sudden it's sophisticated. Yeah. Exactly. It's the yeah. best material. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, the gelatos. I like that you said pliable, like that you use that word because what I like about them is you can shade with them. Like you can take your finger and rub and it almost like the warmth and the friction from your finger mm -hmm. um, almost melts them into the page. It does. Yeah. It's, it's really my, the only way I know how to create shadow in art. 
is by using gelatos. And before, yeah. pre gelato, I had no idea. I, I was like, I don't know how to make this look, <laughs> how to make this have any sort of shadowy effect or. Right. So the gelatos have really helped broaden like the depth of my work because of that. So yeah, those are awesome. Cool. So why don't you tell us what is happening in your business? Like what's on the horizon for you creatively? Sure. Well, I, that's a difficult question because as a creative, it's always, like, <laughs> it's always there's always things on the horizon. Oh, um, However, at the moment, although I'll never stop teaching art, that will always be there. Right, right now, the focus is, is to help other creatives, mm -hmm. artists, and what I like to call those putting out like goodness out in the world, yeah. right? Whatever that may be, just that really positive content. Mm -hmm. uh, what I notice is that, especially say artists, they get really nervous and overwhelmed with all of the possibilities of sharing their creative goodness online. Yes. And so I really like to facilitate their success. I like to coming from an artist's perspective myself, I like to get them in the right frame of mind and so that they don't feel so overwhelmed or, mm -hmm. you know, feeling like they have to look like all the other artists out there. And I kind of help them get their own voice and yeah. their own brand yeah. um, online. So at the moment, my, my business is, is focusing on that and really helping other artists get themselves out online mm -hmm. while always staying true to the fact that it's always been my goal to inspire others to take on a cre creative practice. Right whether you have experience or not. So the world of Simply Art will always hold true to that. So yeah. I'll always teach art, but while I'm doing it, I'm gonna help other artists. Yeah, I love that. That's beautiful. Um, huh. So two other things. I would love sure. for you to show us some of your art, any art journaling you have, or any art you just wanna share with us and show. That's the whole beauty of like having this kind of conversation is we get to see your art. Yeah. Um, and then make sure you tell us, you know, tell folks how they can find you, all the different places, and I'll make sure they get all the links. But tell us, you know, the best ways to find you and follow you and, you know, just experience you in all of your creativity. Awesome. Well, what I did when, um, when you invited me uh, for, this, for this interview, and I knew we were going to be sharing, and, and I really wanted to show people all the different ways you could art journal. Yes. So I, I have... Um, we're gonna we're gonna take it way back. <laughs> I love it. Yes. We're gonna take it way back. This is from '94. Okay. I don't even know how old I was. I'm only 29. Okay. So I don't <laughs> even know what '94 was. And I could prove to you that it was '94. I don't know if this is gonna show up in screen, but I'm okay. I'm gonna take a picture. Okay. Can you see the date? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Six something. Four ninety-four. Yeah. I do. Ninety-four. From Michael. My friend. My one of my very first art journals. Yes. Okay? I love that you still have that. I'm going to share some of my very first pages. Ah, this is so awesome. I think I was having a rough day this day. <laughs> so yes, one of my very first. I love it. So the mediums have changed a little bit since then. Right. So now I like to decorate my own covers. Mm, so. Mm-hmm. That one. Um, nice. I like it to be a place <clears throat> where I can express however I'm feeling that day, mm. the good or the bad. Yeah. And in the majority of my work, I use positive intentions. Mm -hmm. So I try to be very mindful when I'm creating. At least sometimes I just want to make a mess, <laughs> but the majority of times I do use positive um, intentions and really mindful thoughts. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my newest pieces, and this is just for me, okay. and it says healed and whole. That's beautiful. And, and you could see the painting behind me kind of mimics the shape there. Yeah. I'm sort of in my lotus water lily type phase. Yeah. Uh, that painting back there is mine as well. Yeah. But beautiful. as far as art journals go, they've now come to be, you know, watercolor, paper, water journals that have the ability to take on a little bit more color, mm -hmm. right? So I started with just regular old lined paper and then it sort of advanced to thicker paper. Right. And then every once in a while I like to make my own journal. I like to hand make my own journal. So I wanted to share the last one, which is um, my gratitude journal. Okay. And this gratitude journal is created with old, with an old notebook cover, mm -hmm. school binder rings, and ribbon. And then inside of it, because artists 
much more talented than me already did the work. <laughs> I, uh, I took old Christmas cards and birthday cards that have been sent uh, to me over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. I punched them and created myself a book. Oh, nice. And then what I do is I'll come in here and I'll, um, I'll scribble, I'll paint, mm -hmm. and then each day I write what I'm grateful for. And this has become just one of my many gratitude journals. So yeah. I, I use a lot. I have at any given time quite a few art journals mm -hmm. <laughs> on mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really, I'll paint on anything. If if you and I were near each other and you stood next to me still for too long, I'd paint you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's just another piece just to show you how I like. I love to paint on anything, including things that are a little more, more sculptural. Um, but... <sighs> I mean, who doesn't love a good old canvas? Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yep. Oh, oh, last one. Last yeah. one. I was just yeah. kidding. Last one. <laughs> For my business plan, right, mm -hmm. those interested mm -hmm. in the business side of things. Right. I also used a handmade art journal for my business plan. Yeah. And I used the same really simple book binding technique of just the punching holes in it. Yeah. And inside of here is my business plan. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That is beautiful. I love the rings um, because it allows you to expand, to add more <laughs> if you want to add more. Um, Absolutely. I love seeing your journey from 1994 to today. <laughs> like that is that talk about epic like that is beautiful. I love that, especially to just see. Um, I have a friend who recently told me she burned. 10 years of worth of her journals mm -hmm. and it, I, I was like I can't breathe why would you do that like I can't even imagine why yeah. I would do that like I get that people want to like purge and get rid of certain yes. things and they want to like uh, release things into the you know ether so that they can move past certain things right but I, I look back at my some of my diary journals and uh -huh. they are they remind me how far I have come Right. Um, as a woman, as an artist, as a, you know, wife, whatever it is, they've really, they keep me moving forward because I yeah. see that I am, when it even feels like I'm not making progress in life, it, I really actually have been making pro progress. So yeah. it's beautiful to see your art journals and the fact that you have so many of them that you yeah. kept over the years, like yeah. basically documenting your journey and your life. I love that. Um, that's a really beautiful sort of testament to art journaling and the power of it. So I was just you. looking on the side of me and I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, it'd be great if we could mention that I think sometimes when, at least when I used to hear art journaling before I, I knew that's what I had been doing all, all, all these years, right. exactly. <laughs> um, I thought that it was so sophisticated and so artistic right. that in order for me to art journal, I either one needed to be selling them or mm. it needed to be little works of art, right? right? right. And so there was a small time when um, the Smash book, is that what they're called? Yeah, right? yeah, I know Smash the book. Smash, right? Yeah. When the Smash books came out? Yeah. The very first year they came out, there was only a minute second where I was a little bougie, right? A little, a little snooty, if you will. And I thought, that's not art journaling. And then I was like, yeah, of course it is, right? Yeah. So if anyone yeah. out there is watching, yeah. it doesn't have to be this extravagant thing. I actually pulled one of my Smash books just to show you that it yeah. doesn't matter what materials you use. Everything yeah. might fall out. Ooh, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be this, you don't have to have the talent in your mind you think you might have to have. It can right. start really simple. Yep. And I really like sharing my smash book to show people that that it, it can be that simple. Yep. Even the, um, I don't have my copy to show, but the, um, did you ever do the uh, Wreck This Book, the Carrie Smith? Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. that, you know, is a form of anything that allows you to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we talk about it we talk about the art journal as a container a lot of times yeah. like it's the format but what goes inside of it is totally whatever comes out of you your your right. creative expression so I'm glad you showed the smash book because I yeah. do I totally think smash books are like art journals because you can smash a bunch of stuff together yes. in there with and you can express yourself which in essence yeah. is what the art journal is for it's, it's to express that. yourself it's a absolutely. it's a positive way of expressing yourself yeah absolutely so You've shown us your art. You've told us what's happening in your creative business. Mm -hmm. um, 
Any, any last words to us? Anything else you want to share or tell us about before we wrap up? Oh, I would just, I would just say start today, you know, what, whether it's grabbing a, a piece of paper out of your printer, right? And whatever, whatever medium you've got that'll make a mark, whether it's a pencil or a pen, yeah. I would just say start expressing yourself today and, and know that it's for you, that you don't have to show anyone if you don't want to. And it doesn't have to be on Instagram, right? <laughs> With the latest picture right. of your art journal. It can right. be something for you. It's, it's good for the soul. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lizette, it is my pleasure and honor to have had the chance to talk to you today. Seriously, I am, I'm telling you, when I need a little boost, I type in Simply Art. It already is in my little URL, so it just comes up automatically. <laughs> And I go straight to your page and there's always something good there. There's always some goodness waiting for me. Um, so I'm going to make sure that people know how to find that goodness. Uh, awesome. Because I do believe that you are one of the many people in the world that are so creative. Creative enough that your creativity f spills out into the world for others to, to like take a part of. So thank mm -hmm. you for being that. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. We'll see you on the blog. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye.